The Russo Gambit is insane. Most of you don't know about this opening, but it will help you win games with black much more easily. I know that chess is hard, but you may actually win games without even thinking if you know the variation. Let's go. e4, e5, symmetric stuff, knight f3, and knight c6. He plays bishop c4, he thinks life is good, he's gonna play a very quiet opening, and then you smash him with f5. This is the Russo. If I accept the gambit, he knows the variations. What I'm gonna do is that I'm not gonna accept it. But some are just greedy and they're just gonna take. Now I want you to push the pawn. If he goes back with the knight, it's super easy for us to play. We're gonna develop the knight here because this could have been a nasty check. So now you control the square. When he plays d3, trying to challenge basically the center, what you're gonna do is just push the pawn on d5, attack the bishop. The bishop is gonna go here. And now you grab this pawn with your bishop. And look what's happening. You have three pieces out already with black. And look at this. I mean, that's an amazing position. I mean, that's super easy to play. Okay. But when you push, a lot of new players like pins. And they're going to play a move like this, thinking, you know what? I saw a pin and you didn't. What you're going to do is just respond by the same, playing the same move. And now he's forced to actually move the knight. And the only square is to go to g1. And now develop your knight to try and push d5. And he's going to tell you, no way, you're not going to push d5. I put my knight here and I'm controlling it. And now what you're going to tell him is your queen move was absolutely dumb. So go back home. I'm attacking also this pawn for a fork. You go back trying to protect the pawn. And guess what? I actually do not care about your knight move. I'm going to push this pawn. I'm going to sacrifice it. Because if you take, I take, take. And now I take the pawn, I'm giving you another one. If you're greedy, because you took the first pawn, you're going to take the second pawn, right? And now it's going to get real interesting. You're going to play a move that is really hard to find because it's just not something that happens very often in chess. Push the pawn. That's crazy. It opens up actually the bishop. Now we're targeting this. If he takes the rook, he's gone. But you're not gonna, not the way you think. Not the way you think. You're not taking actually this pawn. Push! And when he takes, now the queen is gone. It's crazy. That's totally insane. I love it. And you win this way. You say he didn't have to actually take this rook. He could actually maybe play a move like this. Now I want you to play rook d8. I mean, actually, he cannot take because he's pinned. You play rook d8 and you're threatening to win the queen on the next move. He could have played a move like this, considering you're targeting actually the c2 square. It doesn't work. He loses a piece after queen check and also attacking this one. Now you're going to say there is a fork. You take. Now they check. You move the king. They take the knight. But at the end of the variation, we had a little trick. Queen take g2 and the rook is ours and we win this way. And this king, to be honest, is not very, it's not in danger. It's not in danger here. If he gives a check, you just bring the bishop and you're fine. But most people who are human, not stockfish or something, every time someone gambits a pawn, so tries to give you a pawn for free, the first thing that comes to our mind is like, okay, he knows what happens if I accept the gambit. So I'm just not gonna play it. I'm gonna play something else. And the other move here that seems natural is just to sustain the center, to, to, to kind of help the center with a move like d3. But it's not gonna be that simple. Now develop your knight on f6. And here, they think that they're winning. They think that they have this kind of moves, knight g5. And they're jumping in here because the bishop also controls it. But now I have a move for you. You go with d5. And when they take, you go with b5. How cool is this? I mean, how cool is this? That's amazing. Honestly, if they take the knight, you take. If they take back, look at this. This is not double pawn. This is triple pawns. Tripled pawns. Crazy. You just exchange the queens here and you have a, and you have a very good position. You know, you can just put h6. The knight goes back to f3 and you just play something like bishop d6. And it's perfectly fine to play. You're going to target basically these ones in, a, in an endgame. You play bishop e6, castle, and it's fine. Okay? If he takes on b5, 
now you take and it's a double attack right you're targeting also the pawn there so he's forced to actually take take the knight you take back and this position is perfectly fine even though you have a pawn down you exchange the queens and you play bishop d6 but okay you're a pawn down with black but you have the bishop pair this is what we have in an open position. This bishop is going to come here. The diagonal is going to be amazing. You also have a column that is open for the rook attacking this pawn. Your pieces overall are way better than white's pieces. And you're going to do okay here. You have, you have what we call compensations. But on this move, Stockfish would consider the best move to be pushing in the center aggressively with a move like d4. This is the move that is the most challenging. But I don't think that your opponents are going to play a move like d4 without knowing what happens. Because think about it. This pawn is on prize. Look what happens. You can just take this one for free. Now they need to know that they need to take on e5. And now you push attacking the bishop. And there is a trap. Because they're going to think. I mean, honestly, most people you're playing against are going to play this move. Check. Thinking. Honestly, they're thinking... If they play a move like this, they already left and they went to, you know, they went to prepare a coffee or something because they think that's it. They won the game because they saw that after G6, it's night day G6. Ah! And now you can't take because of the rook. But you have an amazing move. Actually, after knight F6, black is winning. That's crazy. The queen has to move. And now there is an amazing move which is knight take d4 and it gets real nasty real nasty here what happens if they take take the pawn but the point is not to actually win the rook if the king comes here don't take the rook don't take the rook take the bishop and if he takes checkmate checkmate on move 11. that's a cute one honestly that's a cute one but it gets even worse for them because what happens for instance on a move like king f1 now you take the bishop still you're out of nowhere you're threatening checkmate on the next move here another checkmate it's pretty crazy now if he plays knight c3 he's controlling the square fine you're thinking we're gonna take the rook but we don't just play bishop b4 you're threatening to take the knight and after checkmate now he's going to play bishop g5. If he's a good player, it's a good move. It's a good move because he's thinking, okay, this one is going to be his. And also by moving the bishop, now the rook controls actually this square. Now take it. When he takes, take the rook. Because if he takes the knight, you guessed it. Checkmate. Again. I don't know how many checkmates I show you in this, uh, in this video, but that's pretty crazy. So instead of taking, this one cannot be taken because of checkmate. Instead of taking, he's going to push a pawn. Now, you think we defend this one? Well, first of all, we can't defend this one because we can't go here. But then we ignore it. Bring the knight. If he takes, check. Now the queen is going to be gone. Look at this. King here, check. King here, check. Four king these two. That's insane. That's insane. What I know is that playing the Russo, the Russo Gambit actually with black is pretty fun. Honestly, it's really, really fun. But now, okay, this is if he falls in the trap of playing queen h5. Instead, he could play the normal move, which is bishop b5, but it gets interesting here as well. He's attacking this one twice, just defend it. He goes bishop f4 and it's scary. Because we hate it when there is, you know, this kind of discovery on the queen. But there is no real discovery that is actually hurting us here. Just attack the bishop. If he takes, now play knight f6. And now you are thinking, what is chess cape talking about? There is a discovery and the rook is gone. Now take the knight. Sacrifice the queen. Because this position is actually not easy to play at all. I mean, the plan for black is going to be very simple. We're going to push this one. These two bishops attacking as well. And it's not going to be easy. This knight is going to be able to jump in as well. So we're going to open the position like this. This king is actually safe. 
I mean, I'm just going to put my king here. Look at this. Even if you open, like, let's say this pawn wasn't here, who's going to move my knight from here? Nobody. Nobody. So it's going to be really hard to attack this king. But this one, all the minor pieces plus the rook are basically on, the, on his back. Are, they want to take care of him. You can play this position with black against pretty much anybody. And this is really, really hard to play. Just think about it. This is the move. Next. What are you going to do about it? That's a tough one. I hope you liked the video. I'll see you on the next one.